Let's do an experiment, and I will pour water inside this black sleeve, and we will watch how the sun will heat the water. And it turns out that our solar heater works very well, and now I show how the sun heated the water to 56 degrees Celsius. But this measurement was in September, and now I'm starting to show a summer measurement when the water was heated to 66 degrees Celsius. And it is obvious that the water will be heated more than 70 degrees, if this will be in a more southern country, and not in my Ukraine. And it is interesting to compare the capabilities of our solar heater with traditional flat plate solar collectors which are about 100 times more expensive, and this table shows the production of solar heat during an absolutely sunny day from one square meter of expensive solar collector and from one square meter of our cheap heater. And we can see that this task can be done only by the expensive collector, because our solar heater cannot work well at temperatures greater than 60 or 70 degrees Celsius. But these tasks can be done by our cheap heater although its one square meter will produce less heat than one square meter of the expensive solar collector, but I remind you that our square meter is about 100 times cheaper. However, this table describes a sunny day in the middle of summer. And the colder the ambient air and the farther from the summer solstice, the greater the advantage of expensive collectors. In addition, our solar heater will work very poorly in winter, and Canada or Northern Europe can use our heater only from April to October. Interestingly, these tasks are done by our solar heater better than the traditional solar collector, and this is not surprising because our heater is a cheap type of widely known unglazed solar collectors which are commonly used to heat pool water, and we well know that they work better than traditional collectors if their water temperature is low. So, we can see that this solar heater consists not only of this black film, but also of these sheets of expanded polystyrene and this wooden frame, and this table describes the materials which are needed for a large solar heater with an area of 15 square meters. We can calculate that this is approximately $3 per square meter of solar heater, and I'll start describing its making and installation in about 2 minutes. This is my measurement of the energy parameters of our solar heater, and we can compare them with the parameters of traditional solar collectors. But this is efficiency for a clean heater, and various dirt reduces the efficiency, and this coefficient corresponds to light wind, and increasing its speed increases this coefficient. These coefficients are used for these columns of the table which calculates the heat production of our solar heater during a sunny day. This coefficient is taken from this graph, and we can compare it with this graph for a conventional flat plate solar collector. However, we must pay attention that our table is a very good method of calculating the heat production for an absolutely sunny day, but cloudy hours require calculating the production of heat in a different way. This is the cost of the heat from our solar heater for the cases of Germany, the USA and India, and this is the amount of heat that is produced by one square meter of our heater for a year. These columns describe cost of capital and cost of labor, and they affect the cost of our heat very much. And we can see that the increase of the temperature of our heat radically reduces its production and radically increases its cost and this cost is approximately equal to the cost of heat from natural gas, and these cases correspond to very cheap solar heat which is about 10 times cheaper than heat from gas or other alternatives. Thus, if our solar heaters are located in the southern United States, they must heat water to 65 degrees Celsius, and then this water is heated to the desired temperature by expensive solar collectors or other methods. But we must understand that main share of this heat is produced in summer, but maximum of the production in India is spring and autumn. This cost of heat was calculated by these formulas, and it is obvious that these are approximate methods, and they require the achievement of these targets during the construction of the solar heaters and during their operation. And now I am starting to show how we should install our solar heater, and first I put these beams, and then I will put these sections. The end of this video will show how I make these sections and glue the wooden battens to the sheets of expanded polystyrene. We can notice that this action is difficult for one person, and second worker is a good idea. 
and it is obvious that my section of two parts is inconvenient, but a convenient and divisible section requires sheets of expanded polystyrene with a length of 150 centimeters, and I did not have such long sheets. Ending the installation of each section is its fixation with two pairs of screws, and the first pair fixes our section on beam, and this is the first screw. <laughs> And this is the second screw of this pair. The second pair of screws fixes our section on the previous section, and this is the first screw of the second pair. And now I will install the last screw. Then I have to install these two walls, and these corners are needed if the heater will keep so much water. But if the water level of the heater is only a few centimeters, the construction of walls can be very simple, and now I am showing one of the simple options for installing the wall. These wooden pieces should be placed under each edge of each beam. This is our film for water, and first we need to fix its edge on the wall. And, obviously, the other edge of this film should be fixed to the second wall of our solar heater. And now I pour some water inside our polyethylene sleeve through this hose, and then I will use this set of wooden pieces of different thicknesses to achieve the most horizontal position of the plane of our solar heater. And we can see that I am probing the water level to choose the necessary thickness of wooden piece which will be put under the edge of the beam. And I have to go around our heater several times, and my goal is the same level of water near all edges of all beams. And it is obvious that these actions are unnecessary if our solar heater is installed on a flat even roof of a building. So, we have finished making our solar heater and we can fill it with water after installation its inlet and outlet. This is another of my experiments. I pierced our film with polypropylene pipe, and we can see that the water leakages between the film and the pipe are absent. But these water leakages will appear in a few days, and therefore we need to install this rubber ring which is a piece of this standard rubber hose. Then the ring is fixed by this steel clamp. Now I am showing the water outlet after the end of all actions. The water inlet can be very simple, and it can be a plastic pipe which may be laid along this wall. Now I am starting to show manufacturing of our section. And first I put expanded polystyrene inside the simple device, and it is obvious that one large sheet of expanded polystyrene is better than a large number of these my small pieces. I put polyurethane foam which is glue. But these battens for the edges of sections or their halves must have a continuous track of polyurethane foam, rather than several foam points. The second part of this video will describe my experiments with this solar heater, and it will be description of the maintenance of this heater, features of its operation, recommendations for using this heater and schemes of its connection.